Hey guys, it's Trackleton. You know, I love two-factor authentication, and it's super essential to operating accounts in the digital world. But what about in the situations that you are forced to use it? So let me give you one example that I had to deal with. Last year, I had to help my dad set up the Semantic VIP Access app for his Fidelity account. Now, apparently this is not an isolated incident because the Semantic VIP Access account is deployed with many other businesses for their users to log into their accounts too. But the reason why I was even tasked to do this to begin with, even though my dad doesn't turn on two-factor authentication for anything, is my dad got so annoyed by the text messages every time he needed to log into his retirement account. By default, Fidelity does everything through your phone number, and this includes also contacting support if you need to get things done. Now, for years, Fidelity only supported one other form of two-factor authentication, and that was the Semantic VIP Access app. It's a lame, proprietary app that's basically a gated wrapper for the standard 2FA that literally everyone else in the world uses, like say if you were to just use Google Authenticator, one of its open source clones. And, oh, by the way, August last year, August 2024, Fidelity made an announcement on their Reddit page that they now welcome any kind of two-factor authentication app. So while I was writing this and going through all the strife with my dad, they basically made everything that I wrote previously completely obsolete. But it's not completely obsolete for the people who are forced to use this and somehow stumble across this on the internet. But what really irks me with stuff like semantic VIP access is that it is completely locked down and it is in no way open source. Deep down inside of the app, we sort of know what's going on because what it's doing is it runs normal Google Authenticator stuff that the good websites run, but they don't let you export your codes. And there's also a lot of completely unnecessary data print collection inside of the app, which is totally not acceptable for an app that is designed to guard your accounts and protect your accounts with security. But I'm making this video to celebrate Fidelity's amends, but also prepare the people who would be forced to use this app. So what can we actually do about it? Because I don't want to sit here and complain and moan. I want to find solutions. And find solutions I did. Some people on GitHub, CyroZap and Dan Linsky, have reverse engineered the desktop apps for Symantec's two-factor authentication. So this way, you don't have to use Symantec's app, and you can use a normal cut-and-dry open-source authenticator app, like say for example, Aegis if you're on Android or NT if you're on desktop or iPhone. Whatever app you choose to use, you are able to control your codes, and you are not forced to use Symantec's app, and lose your code in the event that your phone is destroyed or you lose it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install Python VIP Access. And this goes without saying with the name that we're going to need Python installed. But really what we're going to need is we're going to need a program called pipx. Pipx is a package manager run by the Python people, which installs Python apps without tampering of the rest of your system. And it's really good if you have other things that rely on anything Python related. Now, depending on the operating system you use, this can be ranged from easy uh, to a little difficult. Now, if you're on Linux, you can just use your package manager and install pipx through your package manager. Uh, I actually use a distro box or a Docker container. Uh, to run pipx and it just keeps my system clean so i can delete the container when i'm done with using it if you're on windows you can use a package manager called scoop and then after you install scoop you are going to use scoop to install pipx and then on mac os you're going to use a program called homebrew and after you install homebrew by copy pasting the line on their website you will install pipx with a brew install pipx and then after you install pipx, you're going to stay in your terminal, and you're going to run another command. You're going to run pipx install python dash vip access. That's it. Now, you can launch python vip access from your terminal. And unfortunately, terminal is the only way to access it. But if all goes well, you should only need to touch this once every two years. Now, that probably sounds really weird. But let me explain, because we're going to start talking about Symantec's provisioning. 
nor multi-factor authentication apps do everything uh, using the website service that you're interacting with. So, for example, if you're on your Google account and you want to set up two-factor authentication, and then they give you a QR code, which is basically a token, just in QR code form, and then you can copy-paste that into your two-factor authentication app, or you can scan it with your phone. In the case of Symantec, they do it a little differently. What Symantec does is they also generate everything server-side, but they look for very specific requests that only the services that use Symantec do. Symantec does everything using their server, and then they give you your Google given standard, but it's all completely hidden from you. This is just another reason why Symantec sucks, because Google Authenticator and other open source authenticators don't require this much interaction from you, and this can often be very confusing. Now to run Python VIP access, it's going to be installed as one command you can run in whatever terminal you're using, whether you're using it on Linux or Mac OS, or whether you're using PowerShell on Windows. First thing you do is you type on VIP access, and then provision, because we want to generate a new two-factor authentication code. And then we do dash P, and what this does is it prints the output of the code without saving it to a file. If you want to save this to a file, you can just remove this. And if we also will add a dash i, and then we can give the name of the issuer. So for example, the default in Python VIP access is just VIP access, but you can change this to anything you want. And then we're going to do dash t, and we have to interpret the token format that's requested from Symantec servers using their proprietary algorithm. And this token, in this example here, is VSMT. You're probably wondering, what does this token mean, and why do I need to use it? Well, these tokens are different depending on whether you use the mobile Semantic VIP Access app, or the Windows and Mac Semantic VIP Access. But all of them are equally functional. The reason why it's actually really important you set this up is because when I had to call Fidelity to set up everything, the woman at the other end of the line assumed that I was doing everything on my phone, and I had actually generated my code differently. Because when you contact customer support, they are just people in a call center following a script. And if you give them something other than what they expect, they might be very confused. So when they ask you what your identification or a credential or your account ID or whatever is called, you are going to tell them VSMT and say, I am using the mobile app, or like I'm using the app for iPhone or Android. Or, and if you say you're using VSST, you say you're using the Windows app. You know, I don't care if you're using a Mac or Linux, just say you're using the Windows app, they'll, they'll, they'll buy it. <laughs> But there's also a chance that support could ask you for a different token. And for example, the agent that I spoke to asked me for a code that started with the SY. So in this scenario, just regenerate your token again so the verification code matches whatever the customer support representative told you. The other alternative is for the person on the other line, you can just politely tell them that your app is showing you something different and you of course read aloud your code to them which you're going to have to do anyway. Be warned that you need to consult a massive table from Broadcom, who's the parent company of Symantec, to use your codes in the Symantec VIP access app properly. And all of this is obscured from you if you use the app. So people had to go and figure all of this out. And if you run this command, you're going to get an output which is going to create your code for you. And it's going to be this big gibberish thing that starts with OTP off and a bunch of stuff that can look really intimidating to read. So I'm going to try my best to translate the output here. It is going to request from Symantec servers to create a new two-factor authentication seed. What it's going to do is you're, it's going to give it the name Fidelity or whatever name you choose. And it's going to give it a prefix depending on which app you claim you are coming from, whether it be the mobile app or the desktop app. Now, once you've done this, you will be give, then given an output in your terminal, which says something like OTP off. And this is the line that we want to pay a lot of attention to. Now, while this looks a little intimidating, the line that we're going to look for is where it says secret equals, and then a bunch of random numbers and letters. 
This is what we are looking for. So what we want to do is we want to copy everything where it says the secret numbers and letters up to where it says ampersand digits. And we don't want to copy that part, we just want to copy the letters. And you'll also notice at the bottom, there's an expiration date. What is this? Well, because Symantec is the inefficient service that it is, your code expires. So to deal with the fact that your credential expires after a couple of years, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go either make a reminder in your calendar or in a physical planner to tell you to go back and repeat everything we just did all over again. And once you do all of this, you now finally have rid yourself of the Symantec app and you never need to use it again except for the VIP access app. Unless you're like me and you have to undo all of this with your dad because you don't have to do this anymore because Fidelity is getting rid of it altogether because everyone should just get rid of this altogether. Speaking of which, if you like the goofy programs that I cover or the things that I come up with, why don't you leave a like on this video? Leave a like on this video if you are also interested in the world of two-factor authentication. And if you'd like a written guide instead of a video, you can always visit my website, trafotin.com. There's a full transcript of this video, and you can also follow along with written instructions if you don't want to listen to me blab on and on about how much I hate this stupid app. And if you're willing to support me financially, you can always give me money through YouTube memberships, Patreon, or cryptocurrency. That's all for me. I hope you guys enjoy your time rejecting the ways of Symantec, and I will tell you all right now, please don't use Norton anything. I had to convince a 70-year-old woman to stop using Norton. It's the worst thing ever made. All right? Okay, thank you.